There's lots of uh, similarities between art and science, particularly at the moment of inspiration, but basically they're, they're both ways for us to understand the world around us and the world within us and how we try to make sense of all of that. Art System, the Change in Climates of the Arts and Sciences is an exhibition currently on view here in our museum that features 25 pieces of artwork by artists who are either inspired by science or are working in some way more directly with the sciences. This exhibition is part of a larger program. The Art System program at Utah State University consists of the exhibition, as well as a series of visiting artists and science lectures. My name is Mark Lee Coven. I'm an assistant professor uh, at Utah State University. I'm in the art and design department. The main focus of Art System or RT STEM is really trying to integrate or show how important it is to have that cross-disciplinary integration between disciplines. So typically when you have a scientist working, what you'll have is they'll go out, they'll do the research, and then they'll look for an artist or a designer to hire to then showcase or try and create graphs or websites. I guess the inception of this whole uh, program came from my desire to not be at the tail end of the scientific endeavor, but actually at the inception and also have an influential impact on the entire process. Part of what we have done in this exhibition is tried to show um, through our curatorial lenses the ways that the arts and the sciences are, can really be deeply intertwined. And, you know, STEM, of course, stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And there are other, you know, sort of pushes to change that to STEAM and to include art in part of that. So by putting this exhibition together, in some ways, we are highlighting ways in which the arts are really related to scientific practices. The exhibition features works that are both uh, peripherally related to the sciences and works that are directly engaged with the sciences. One of the ways that it does that is that we incorporate works from people who are either maybe have a science background um, and then went on to make art or people like Brandon Ballinger who have very direct connections with science. All of my art is derived from ecological research. As a scientist, I study amphibians, uh, specifically amphibian declines, like declines in their populations and developmental uh, malformations or deformities. And I get very inspired as I'm doing the science to create art. But all of my art somehow relates to either amphibians like this or other species, mostly relating to loss of biodiversity and other environmental issues. Exhibitions like this are really important because it's a way for the public to come in and see like these kind of potential intersections between art and science and the kind of crossovers that can occur. And also I think at this moment in history, hopefully what we're seeing is like this emergence of more integrated programming where we're realizing that people learn in different ways, they experience in different ways. So using the lens of art and science and combining them as much as we can is just another way to, to get more and more people involved. One of my favorite pieces is the Derek Curry piece, which we hear <laughs> going on in the background right now. Um, and I appreciate it for a couple of reasons. One, because it makes the gallery lively. It's been interesting kind of to see, to have living organisms in the gallery, which is not a thing that we normally do. We're not a science museum. Um, so it's been interesting. But I also think that as the piece has been in the gallery now for about four weeks, um, the, the metaphor that Curry um, is employing to talk about um, speech amplification and um, you know political funding just becomes richer as time goes on and the crickets um, change their environment changes. One of the nice things about the way this exhibition came together is that the curators um, looked at a wide range of works. They looked at works historically that are relevant to the arts and sciences and works that are important today. The, the resulting exhibition includes a really nice combination of uh, local artists, regional artists, and nationally and internationally renowned artists. So it achieves a lot in trying to tell 
uh, a little bit of a story about the way in which artists and um, scientists uh, are either inspired or influenced by one another or in some cases how they can work together.